Should have known she was lying.
Agreed, the old fight. Look at guess. He just plucked you off the street and dropped you into the thick of things without telling you which way is up. We've scoured the town and I've spoken to every contact we have left. No sign of Mercer. Any luck on your end? Shore's beard? He's going after the eyes of the Falmer? That was Gallus' pet project. If he gets his hands on them, you can be certain he'll be gone for good. And set up for life. Agreed. He's taken everything the Guild has left. And to go after one of the last greatest heists is just an insult. I've spoken to Carlia and made amends for how the guilds treated her. Now she wishes to speak with both of us. Quickly, we have no time to lose. Next we meet Lot. Hey, let's talk a second. I don't have to say that. They were assured. Not now, Lot. Carlia said it was important. Another way to my coin. I promise you, all your cut. Brynjolf, the time has come to decide Mercer's fate. Until a new guildmaster is chosen, the decision falls to you. Aye, lass. And I've come to a decision. Mercer Frey tried to kill both of you. He betrayed the guild, murdered Gallus, and made us question our future. He needs to die. You have to be very careful, Brynjolf. Mercer is a nightingale. An agent of Nocturnal. And it's all true. Everything I heard in the stories. The Nightingales, their allegiance to Nocturnal, and the Twilight Sepulchre. That's why we need to prepare ourselves and meet Mercer on equal footing. Just outside the rift, beyond the southeast gate is a small path cut up the mountainside. At the end of that path is a clearing and an old standing stone. I'd ask you both to meet me there. I have some preparations of my own to make. I'll meet you at the stone. Are you feeling sick? Barely have any coin to call. You Stranger here too, huh? I presume you're bothering me for a good reason. Hey! Don't look at me that way. Who are you to judge me? Welcome. Allow me to recommend the Blackbriar Mead. 
the purest brew in all of Skyrim. Glad you're here. This is the headquarters of the Nightingales, cut into the mountainside by the first of our kind. We've come to seek the edge we need to defeat Mercer Frey. If you'll follow me, I'll try to explain on the way. This way, please. So this is Nightingale Hall. I heard about this place when I joined the guild, but I never believed it existed. The assumption that the Nightingales were just a myth was seeded within the guild on purpose. It helped divert attention from our true nature. What's wrong, Grinnell? You can almost hear your brow furrowing. I'm trying to understand why I'm here last. I'm no priest, and I'm certainly not religious. Why pick me? This is Nightingale Hall. You're the first of the uninitiated to set foot inside in over a century. Now, if you'll both proceed to the armor to don your Nightingale armor, we can begin the oath. I think we should trust the lass and take the deal. You 
up here ready for the oath. You appear ready for the oath. You appear ready for the oath. Okay, lass. We've got these get-ups on. Now what? Beyond this gate is the first step in becoming a Nightingale. Whoa there, lass. I appreciate the armor, but becoming a Nightingale? That was never discussed. To hold any hope of defeating Mercer, we must have Nocturnal at our backs. If she's to accept you as one of her own, an arrangement must be struck. What sort of arrangement? I need to know the terms. The terms are quite simple, Brynjolf. Nocturnal will allow you to become a Nightingale and use your abilities for whatever you wish. And in return, both in life and in death, you must serve as a guardian of the Twilight Sepulchre. Aye, there's always a catch. But at this point, I suppose there isn't much to lose. If it means the end of Mercer Frey, you can count me in. What about you? Are you ready to transact the oath with Nocturnal? Good. After I open the gate, please stand on the Western Circle. This is enough to make your head spin, eh? We'll speak when the oath is complete. This is enough to make your head spin, eh? We'll speak when the oath is complete. of Merc, an Empress of Shadow. Hear my voice. Ah, Carlia. I was wondering when I'd hear from you again. Lose something, did we? My lady, I've come before you to throw myself upon your mercy and to accept responsibility for my failure. You're already mine, Carlia. Your terms were struck long ago. What could you possibly offer me now? I have two others that wish to transact the oath. To serve you both in life and in death. You surprise me, Caroline. This offer is definitely weighted in my favor. My appetite for Mercer's demise exceeds my craving for wealth and grace. Revenge. How interesting. Very well. The conditions are acceptable. You may proceed. Lady Nocturnal, we accept your terms. We dedicate ourselves to you as both your Avengers and your Sentinels. We will honor our agreement in this life and the next until your conditions have been met. Very well. I name your initiates Nightingale, and I restore your status to the same, Carlisle. And in the future, I'd suggest you refrain from disappointing me again. I suggest you talk to Carlyle. Now that you've transacted the oath, it's time to reveal the final piece of the puzzle to you. Mercer's true crime. Mercer was able to unlock the guild's vault without two keys because of what he stole from the Twilight Sepulchre. The skeleton key. By doing this, he's compromised our ties to Nocturnal and, in essence, caused our luck to run dry. Well, yes. But the key isn't only restricted to physical barriers. All of us possess untapped abilities. The potential to wield great power securely sealed within our minds. Once you realize the key can access these traits, the potential becomes limitless. Good. 
then you understand why this is about more than just Mercer's lust for power. If the key isn't returned to its lock in the Twilight Sepulchre, things will never be the same for the Guild. As time passed, our luck would diminish to the point of non-existence, and whether you know it or not, our uncanny luck defines our trade. Very true. In our line of work, it's quite rare we set out to return a stolen item to its rightful owner. Before we depart, Brynjolf has some business to discuss. I suggest you listen to him. Listen, lad. There's one last piece of business we need to settle before we go... Listen, lad. There's one last piece of business we need to settle before we go after Mercer. The leadership of the guild. Carlia and I had a long discussion before you arrived here. Thanks to your efforts, Mercer's treachery has been exposed. After we deal with him, all that remains is restoring the guild to its full strength. As a result, we both feel that you have the potential of replacing Mercer as leader of the Thieves' Guild. I've been at this game a long time, my friend. A long time. I've stolen trinkets from nobles and framed priests for murder. I'm good at what I do, maybe even one of the best, but it's all I know. I've never been one to lead, never desired it, never cared for it, don't want it. Well, we have a bit of an errand to run before your coronation, so don't get sentimental on me now. Then it's decided. When this is all over and Delvin's contacts assure me that we've regained our footing in Skyrim, We'll handle the details. Until then, we have quite the task ahead. I've been poring over the plans you brought us, and I'm convinced the eyes of the Falma are in the Dwarven ruins at Urkenthan. Carlia and I will meet you there. Prepare yourself, lad. This will be a fight to remember. Until next... Meet, lad.